what's going on folks this is clay with clay's ac and auto repair and clay motion here in grand rapids michigan and you're watching the clay way if this video is helpful please consider subscribing but at the very least i would greatly appreciate it if my video helps you put on one of my sweet playlists turn the volume down if you don't want to listen to my mouth run all day long let that thing play from front to back and remember if anyone else can do it you can do it too that i promise you so today we're working on a 2011 Chevy Equinox that has a 2.4 in it. This is going to be the same thing as your Saturn uh, View 2008 or newer, your GMC Terrain, your Chevy Malibu, um, anything that has the 2.4 four-cylinder engine in it. And even though the newer models of these are fuel injected, they're direct fuel injection versus typical fuel injection which is found in the earlier models like 2008 to 2010 2011 or 2012 they changed that to direct injection and i'm not certain about this one we're having a problem with the vehicle kind of stalling and doing some different stuff so i'm going to go through a couple of tests and i'm going to explain to you what's going on and why it's happening and how it works and even show you a disassembled engine and give you a better idea of what you're doing and why you're doing this procedure the first thing I'm doing right now is I'm actually going to scan the vehicle and we're going to find the fault codes in it. Okay, so the codes that I'm primarily concerned with are engine operation trouble codes. So I'm going to check this out. All right, this exhaust valve code is the one that I'm worried about the most. And that's a P0013. Now this is the exhaust side, but there's actually two sides to this sensor right here. There's an intake side and an exhaust side. And in this video, I'm actually going to replace both of them, the intake and the exhaust. Okay, so these are the VVT control valve solenoids. What happens is oil goes up inside there and it regulates the amount of oil that goes to the cam VVTs. And in our engine compartment, they're located right here underneath this cover and it's really super simple to get to. We're gonna take the top of the air box off, the inlet tube right there and the snorkel that goes down to the throttle. Now we're gonna gently pull out on this we're not gonna to try to bend it because there's a nipple that goes inside there. And then that'll pop that off. Now taking a flathead, we're gonna remove this clamp right here or at least loosen it. This kind of seems a little bit tricky, but down here on the bottom, there's a flathead screw that we need to loosen there as well. Now taking one arm right here and one arm right here, we can wiggle this a little bit and then we can pull it up and pull it up out of our way. I don't remember, but I think we need to remove the oil cap because it helps hold down the plastic top engine cover. Then we should be able to lift it up. It's gonna be stuck on some little tabs, but should lift up pretty easy. And the little tabs go right inside here. Now with that removed, it exposes our solenoids. Obviously we wanna check the wires, make sure none of the wires are broken or anything like that. These solenoids are held on by two 10 millimeter bolts right down inside there. So we're gonna to have to do them once we do an inspection. I recommend looking over here at this tube right here because this will give you a false reading. If this tube is broken, which these things do break, they will give you a code for the same exact thing. To inspect the tube, I remove the isolator, which has a slit down the center of it, but it's pretty brittle. So you wanna make sure that you have some more to replace it, but you wanna inspect this tube. To avoid it breaking any further, I took half of it off and then slid the other half up. Now that that inspection is done, we can start communicating about what is going on and why is it happening. 
Okay, so here's where people run into situations and problems that they don't quite understand. These are solenoids, and they help work with the VVT, which is the variable valve timing. On the back side of your head, and it doesn't matter if you have a fuel-injected one or the direct injection one, they're going to be pretty much the same. There's a cam sensor here, and there's a cam sensor back here, and these little notches tell the ECM where each one of these cams are. Depending on the RPMs of the engine, that tells these solenoids what to do. In my situation, it says this solenoid is bad right here, but to save some money, we're gonna replace both of them at the same time. You do not have to do that. But I think in this situation, it's best. I had already quoted the guy out and told him, hey, you know, this is how much it's going to cost. It was a little bit cheaper than I thought. And I felt like I could do this and replace both of them. And then hopefully I don't have to work on this again. If you have a cam correlation code, which is very, very common with them, more than likely there's a timing chain pedestal right here. It's a little bracket that comes up and it sits on the top of the timing chain when it's riding right here and this chain gets slack in the center here these guides go bad you need to fix this immediately especially if you're getting cam sensor codes from back here more than likely it's not the sensors these things don't go out very much these are more like little motors inside here so it's more typical to see these actually go defective Okay, first thing I can do is I can push down on these tabs right here. And once again, if it doesn't release, just push it down and then pull it up. Now, I don't think that these things are going to plug in differently or be the same exact plugs. But just in case, try not to bend up the wires too much. And then they'll lay right back where they're supposed to go because this one's a little bit longer than this one. Now the black one is the exhaust side and the gray one is the intake side, but you can also look down inside there and see that the connections are different. If you're using standard components like I am, VVT199 is your exhaust and VVT, sorry, VVT-198 is your intake. I've already loosened up the screws. Now these little buggers can be sticky, so we may want to take a little screwdriver down there To get these to wiggle a little bit, I take my screwdriver and I put it down in there and I'll just twist my screwdriver to get them to move. And once I get them to move inside there, I can take my other arm, put it here on the top with my screwdriver and just twist. And then we should be able to wiggle the top of it out. If that doesn't work, you can take a pick tool and insert it down there between where the bolt goes and the base. Once we get them removed, we can stick our finger down inside the hole, put a little bit of oil on it, and then put the oil on the O-ring right there. It's not 100% necessary, but it helps. Now the kit comes with new bolts, and I'm gonna go ahead and use them even though I don't think it's necessary. So don't fret none if your kit doesn't come with brand new bolts like mine. And I just tighten them down to where they're snug. I can't imagine that they take any more than like 15 foot pounds of pressure. So I'll usually just tighten things down. Anytime I'm using a quarter inch bolt with the ratchet and I'll take my palm and I'll put it at the end of my ratchet and I'll turn it. And then I know that they're tight once that kind of locks up to where I can't turn it no more than I know I've got right around 10 to 15 foot pounds of pressure, maybe even 25. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug my sensors back in 
and install my plastic. Okay, first the top goes on, then the oil cap. And when I set the snorkel on there, I make sure that it's seated down on my throttle. I also want to check the back and make sure it's rested on the pins. Then I take a little bit of pride in the work that I'm doing, spray it down, and wipe it off. Don't have to be 100% clean, but it makes it look nicer when somebody opens the hood. Now, ideally, we want the check engine light to turn itself off, but in this situation, I had an immobilizer code that was still stuck in there, so I ended up turning mine off. But what we can do is we can cycle the key, and it'll say checking right down in there, about five times, and if the check engine light's gonna reset itself, it should do it during that process. So now we've got a good situation going on. So she's all back together and it's gonna live to fight another day. Well, hopefully you guys found the video to be helpful, informative, and the C-roll a little bit entertaining there. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair. I happily try to answer them for my subscribers for free. At the very least, please turn the volume down on your phone, computer, whatever you watch my stuff on. Put on one of my sweet playlists and just let it play while you're sleeping. That would help good old Clay. I greatly appreciate y'all. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next of them. Be the first to you. God bless and have the best of days.